Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, May 24th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, I wrote up a recent detect from our honeypots, and that's an increase in scans for a vulnerability in jQuery file upload. This is a popular jQuery extension that allows you to upload files. Has had some vulnerabilities in the past, but the most recent one I found was actually back in 2018. What's sort of interesting here, aside from the fact that over the last week or so, we often a sudden saw an increase in scans for a jQuery file upload is that it appears to be one specific attacker. Not only is it just one IP address doing it, but it's also a very specific user agent. And that user agent, we have seen it starting last year, always looking for various file upload scripts. So that appears what this particular attacker is targeting. Allowing users to upload files is always dangerous, in particular like a jQuery file upload. If you allow the uploads into the document root of your web server, or if you feed the files into third party tools like Image Magic, for example, for resolution adjustments or to convert file formats. And for developers, there's actually a nice blog post back from 2018 with these older uh, jQuery file upload vulnerabilities that illustrates how some of these vulnerabilities happen and how they can be exploited. And Oracle today released a special update for Oracle eBusiness Suite. This is noteworthy because typically Oracle only releases security patches once a quarter. The vulnerability itself does allow the unauthenticated exposure of confidential information, in particular PII. Now, a footnote also states that authentication may be required, but well, an attacker can actually self-register for an account. To check whether or not a patch is available for your particular version of Oracle eBusiness Suite, you have to log in to Oracle's website in order to retrieve the patch availability document. And we uh, talked a couple times in the past weeks about npm packages where the maintainer's email was tied to a domain that's no longer available and could be taken over now there is a strategy that you can use that uh, helps you identify any packages that you are using that uh, may be affected by this danish tariq came up with this particular strategy and well it's Pretty straightforward, requires a little bit work, but first of all, you can extract with a simple npm view command the maintainer's emails, and then next, essentially, you check whether or not uh, the email addresses are still valid using various other tools. Of course, the next question, once you know what packages that you're using are vulnerable, what are you going to do next? Uh, Well, uh, maybe monitor for recent updates to these tools and apply some additional scrutiny to these new updates that are released uh, for packages that appear to be no longer really all that well maintained. And researchers at Microsoft came up uh, with an interesting new attack that they are calling pre-hijacking. And they found that out of the 75 popular services that they looked at, 35 of them were vulnerable to some extent. So the trick here is that an attacker is able to hijack your account even before you register for the particular service. As an example, the attacker is registering an account with the service and then is changing their email address to the victim's email address. Now, there's typically a verification that's happening, but if the change is made even without verification, then later, if the victim is trying to register for the service, they're being told that they already have an account. And that's sort of where then an attacker can use the fact that they owned the attack the account before to log in after the victim associated the account with their email address. 
that Hacker may also still have an open session with the service or a number of different ways that they're going over in this paper explaining how this attack can happen. But the basic problem is that anybody is able to register an account for any email address and that initial validation of the email address or later when you're changing the email address is not done correctly. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.